Jackrabbit at Seabreeze is the oldest continuously operating roller coaster in North America. This classic out and back coaster recently celebrated its centennial anniversary and it shows no signs of leaving anytime soon. This ride is still the heart and soul of Seabreeze and a darn good wood coaster. Find out why in this review. Jack Rabbit was designed by John A. Miller and it opened back in 1920 as the world's fastest roller coaster. That 42 mile per hour or 68 km per hour top speed may not seem like much nowadays, but it was a speed demon back then. The ride was also one of the first to feature an under friction system to securely fasten the train to the track. This allowed the coaster to traverse more extreme elements safely. Several changes have been made to the coaster over the years, but Jack Rabbit still runs strong. In 1923, a fire destroyed the coaster's lift hill first drop in station. All three were rebuilt for the following season. In 1928, a tunnel was added on the ride's final drop that went down the ravine. Most tunnels occur on flat ground, so this is a really cool addition. Then in 1989, the coaster received the Morgan train it operates with today. This replaced the older National Amusement Devices train. While Lakemont Park's Leap the Dips is the oldest roller coaster operating in both North America and the world, that coaster has been closed several years due to financial issues. Jack Rabbit has run every single year since opening. Seabreeze sort of had to cheat in 2020 to accomplish this though. The park was closed for the entire 2020 season due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but the park held special employee ride nights to maintain the record for the longest continuously operating roller coaster in North America. The ride was originally designed to run alongside the trolley line that serviced the park, but now those hills run parallel to the parking lot. This is a pleasant welcome for guests as you see train loads of happy riders cresting the camelbacks and bunny hills. From within the park itself, you can really only see the ride's 75 foot or 23 meter tall lift hill and the station with the oversized sign. This sort of makes the ride a mystery if you didn't park in that lot with Jackrabbit. This ride sports a white support structure like many classic woodies and then you have brownish red running boards. The ride looks very clean and it's super well maintained like much of Seabreeze. And one of the coolest things about this coaster is that it's a terrain ride. While the layout seems simple, Many of the drops have some extra height by sinking into the ground. While many enthusiasts aren't a fan of Morgan trains, I actually like how they look. The train looks fresh with the red paint, curved front, and ride logo on front. Each row is secured by their own shared lap bar. There's no other seat belts nor restraints. Unlike some Morgans like the Ride Dragon coaster that only have one lock position for the lap bar, Jack Rabbit's lap bar is adjustable. So if you're riding with a larger guest, the smaller one will get a boatload of room for airtime. I would recommend holding onto that lap bar once checked, otherwise it can slowly to continue lower throughout the coaster. As for seat selection, I definitely recommend the front row. It has the most and best airtime, plus that unobstructed view. And thankfully despite this ride's age, you don't really need to worry too much about rough seats. This ride is remarkably smooth for a 102 year old coaster. The first two valleys have a bit of a shuffle to them, and it's more pronounced in wheel seats or the back of a car, but it's not a major bother at all. Seabreeze runs just one train on Jackrabbit. That train features five cars, each seating four riders for a total of 20 per cycle. Now I've only visited this park on weekdays, but the rides have a very manageable wait. I haven't had to wait more than 10 to 15 minutes. This is the park's most popular ride but it has a higher capacity than the other two adult coasters, so you typically have to wait less than you do for bobsleds or whirlwind. Dispatches are quite swift in this coaster because of the simple setup. There are no air gates, so guests can board immediately after the prior riders stand up, and you have just those lap bars so the operator can quickly check them. The only time a dispatch was slow was if the operator held the train on a quiet day for more riders to board. This ride also is manually operated with giant levers in the station. I'm a sucker for rides that still use these. Once dispatched, you slowly round a turn and head up the 75 foot or 23 meter tall lift hill. You hear the glorious click clack of the anti-rollbacks as you go up the hill faster than you may expect for a ride so old. You don't get much of a view because of the ride's placement in the nearby trees, but the ride makes up for it later. The first drop starts by banking left before plunging into the ravine. This is actually one of the more shallow drops in the ride, so it doesn't offer any airtime. 
but those negative G's are coming later, I promise. Next is a sizable camelback. The train does crest this hill pretty slowly, so it's another one that sadly has no airtime. As I mentioned earlier, the pullouts from this hill and the prior one are the only two bumpy spots on the ride. The third hill is a smaller camelback you navigate with more speed, so this one offers some weak floater airtime for those up front, and a weak pop for those in back. The turnaround features the ride's strongest airtime if you're up front. The entry into the element gives a really good burst of airtime in that front car. Even those in the back car will get some lift at the crest of the turnaround. Then the resultant turn manages to offer some decent and sustained laterals due to the lack of banking. The return run starts with a double down. While this is another element that's a bit too gradual to offer airtime, it is cool how you drop into another pit. Next are back to back bunny hills. The first gives no airtime in the front car, but it's my personal favorite moment on the ride if you're in the back car. After getting a great head chopper with supports at the apex, you get an abrupt lateral kink and a nice pop of airtime. This is because the drop is surprisingly steep while also subtly banking left, and you cannot see that change of direction coming in advance, so the laterals catch you off guard. The next hill is a dud for those in back, but it does give an okay burst for those in front. You then rise up another hill, and if you're up front, you'll get some more weak air time. You then navigate a 360 degree helix. This turn is really cool because it's engulfed by trees on all sides, and you get another dose of solid and sustained laterals. Jackrabbit simply does not believe in banking. You then enter the ride's tunnel. It's surprisingly dark, which conceals the final trick. You have this dip down the ravine. It's too shallow to offer any airtime, but it offers a nice sense of speed, and it's a fun touch you usually don't get in a tunnel. You then rise up into the brakes, and if you're up front, you get some really good floater airtime climbing out of this ravine. You then hit the brakes, ending this 2,130 foot or 650 meter long coaster. I was actually shocked to see it had so little track length because it honestly feels like a much longer, more complete ride. So what would I rate the Jackrabbit? I would give this classic wood coaster a 7 out of 10. Don't expect the world's most intense ride, but this coaster has plenty to offer. It starts with a nice setting that has quite a bit of tree coverage and multiple drops going into the ground. Then you have some enjoyable airtime pops, especially since you'll likely have more room to experience those forces than on other coasters due to the lap bar setup. Lastly, this is such a historic ride that's in great condition. Seabreeze is rightfully proud of this coaster and is a worthy top attraction for this New York park. So those are my thoughts on Jackrabbit at Seabreeze. What are your thoughts on this over 100 year old coaster? Do you think it's the best ride at Seabreeze? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.